Greeting denizens of the interwebs. This is Jacob K. Baker for Atomic Stick Figure Productions. Now, for those of you who have like been subscribed to my channel for a, a while, you'll know that back whenever I created the Hyper Godzilla costume, I did several videos chronicling its construction. Uh, now, this video here is basically all those photos put back to back, and why I'm doing it this time around is. <laughs> YouTube has decided to disable the audio in some countries and also in some parts of the world it just completely eliminated it from YouTube. So for those of you who can't see the other videos, uh, here is this uh, gigantic Hyper Godzilla video. Um, now there are several things that I want to go over and I think a good place to start is actually how the Hyper Godzilla costume actually came to be in the first place. See, in 2010, I think it was. Yeah, 2010 was whenever we started constructing the costume. Um, actually, this goes back to 2009. Uh, because in 2008, uh, I'm sorry for tossing all these dates at you, uh, but the the first costume we built was Man Thing, and the costume turned out fantastically. And I wanted to one up the the Man Thing costume, so then we developed the Liquor costume, which detail wise was far more impressive. Now for the Hyper Godzilla, uh, it really wasn't something that I had planned on doing. Uh, actually, after we had finished the Liquor costume and took it to the Tulsa Comic and Anime Expo, uh, my father and I, uh, my dad, Rick Baker, uh, not the Hollywood Rick Baker, but a man of equal talents and the same name, um, we, we both discussed, like, the next costume to construct, and what he wanted to do was actually build two costumes. He wanted to build a Godzilla costume and a Hedora. Now, I am a huge Hedora fan. Uh, you know, he's, like, within my top ten... Uh, favorite Godzilla monsters. Um, but the thing about building a Hedora costume is that, see, if I know there are certain proportions done in the actual movie suits, I want to try and replicate those for whatever we do. And Hedora, if you ever see a photo of Ken Satsuma inside of the Hedora costume without the head, you very quickly realize that that costume is like twice the size that he is. And, well, of course, my thought was, well, if that was the way they did their costume, I want my costume to be twice the size of me. Which would put the costume at, like, close to 12 feet, if not over, because I'm six foot three. So, and the, the whole problem with doing a costume of that size, while it would be super impressive, it's just a really big freaking costume. You know, because uh, not only is it tall, but uh, Hedora is a very large build. So the costume itself would take up all of the room in the shop, and I wouldn't be able to move around in any convention hall, you know, just because the suit is so gigantic. So the fallback plan, because of the obvious limitations of Hedora, was to just build the Godzilla costume. Now, I'm personally not that big of a fan of Godzilla. I mean, I love the movies, but in terms of just, like, Godzilla being one of my favorite kaiju, he's really not. He's actually really low on my list, uh, just because the character is so overused. Uh, I, I, I much prefer other, other kaiju. And, in fact, I actually, at this time, thought about building a magma costume. Uh, you know, because of my favorite Toho monsters, Magma is number one. And when I had set out originally on building these costumes, I I wanted to do five. And I wanted to do costumes of things that were obscure and not really in the public's eye. You know, that's why I did Man-Thing. And the liquor costume came about because I had never seen anyone really just do a super detailed costume of that character. And, you know, Magma is... A to me, at the time, he was really obscure. I'm not sure how the fandom feels about the character now, 
But at the time, you know, I never heard anyone ever say anything about, oh, Magma, he's super cool, or he's really lame, or anything like that. I'd, I'd never heard anyone say anything about that character. So he was the one that I actually wanted to build. Uh, and then, of course, I wanted to build uh, a couple of other characters, but uh, we're not going to get into those because I doubt I'll ever build them. Uh, but the Godzilla costume. Godzilla was something that my dad had wanted to build for quite a while, and he'd actually done a couple of attempts earlier. Um, he had built one for my brother when he was, oh, I don't know, I'm going to say like 10, in, in the 10 range. And then years later, uh, him and my brother attempted to build another Godzilla costume based off of the one from Godzilla vs. the Thing. And I think the costume was it was it was pretty foreign build because I remember looking at the body and it actually having been shaped and textured. Uh, but for whatever reason, they never did get around to actually completing that costume. And I think I wound up dismembering it and using it for a different project. Uh, yeah, I believe that's what happened. But at any rate, the, that costume uh, very quickly became non-existent. So, you know, Dad wanting to build this uh, this character, I thought, well, this is a good time to just do our version of the character. You know, and it is something that Dad wants to do. And, you know, Dad helps me out all the time, and I help him out whenever I can. And since he helped out on building the first two costumes, I thought, well... Let's build this costume for Dad. You know. uh, so, yeah, that's how the Hyper Godzilla came about. And the Hyper Godzilla itself is... Okay, whenever I build a costume, I never look at a particular design and say, oh, we've got to build this incarnation. Uh, because my own logic... And it's a very strange logic, I know. But... I, I hate doing reproductions. Uh, and the reason for this is because uh, a reproduction costume is you're making something that has already been done. And I like to do something new each time I do something. It's like if you look at any of the costumes, they are hybrids of different versions of a character. You know, Man-Thing, if you're familiar with the comics, uh, you'll note that his back uh, has a certain shape to it that comes from uh, I don't think it was Mike Plug's version of him I think it was one of the other artists but someone drew his back a certain way and then someone drew his uh, dangly face roots or whatever a certain way and then certain artists did you know they just did different things in their own way and so for Man Thing, I just compiled together all the different things that I thought looked pretty neat. And then there was some stuff that Dad thought looked pretty cool. So, you know, he got some stuff that he wanted in the, into that design as well. And, you know, the same with the liquor. You know, y you look at it and it's like, oh, it's obviously the one from Resident Evil 2. But if you look closer at it, there's details and stuff from uh, some of the other games. And Godzilla, I thought, well, why ruin this tradition? You know, because it's sort of our approach to costume. Uh, whenever we build a character that's uh, a licensed character, and so I just looked at the different versions of Godzilla and just said, okay, well, I like the eyes from GMK, and that's why he's got the the hollow eyes. You know, just because I thought that those looked super spooky. Uh, his build is super slim. Uh, which is part of the 55 design. If you if you pay close attention to the Godzilla Raids Again costume, it's actually really skinny, uh, which is a fact that not a lot of people actually catch, apparently. Uh, and then, you know, his back fins. The back fins are funny to me because uh, I took them solely from the 54 suit, you know, because it was the, the first Godzilla and, you know, those fins and the, the way that they looked have always appealed to me, so I'm like, let's use those fins. Uh, but people keep mistaking them for the fins from Final Wars. and uh, it's uh, That, to me, has always been funny because they're obviously not the Final Wars fins. 
but they're the ones that everyone thinks that they are. Uh, and then, of course, his his head is a very interesting story. Um, and, and also a complaint that I get from a lot of people. Uh, because the Hypergodzilla has a very large head. And he has a very large head for multiple reasons. Um, you know, uh, one of my dad's favorite Godzilla interpretations was a maquette for the original film. I can't remember... It may have been the alligator goji. I'm not really quite remembering it right now. But the maquette had this really big head. And Dad always loved that look because he, you know, he's a big dinosaur fan. And dinosaurs tend to have very large heads. As do predators. You know, if you look at an animal in the real world that actually hunts down other animals, their heads are usually pretty big. And, you know, just reptiles in general tend to have fairly large heads, too. So our logic was like, well, Godzilla's a dinosaur. Let's give him dinosaur in proportions. You know, in keeping with Dad's appreciation for this maquette design. But also the Radosaurus from the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Uh, and we did the Radosaurus homage. And if you actually look at the, the sizing of Hyper Godzilla's head, like the distance from his snout to the back of his jaw and then the distance from the back of his jaw to the very back of his head it's actually proportions just like the Radosaurus and the Radosaurus influence came in because without the Radosaurus Godzilla never would have been uh, I can't remember the exact backstory on that but I do remember that being that the Radosaurus actually did influence Godzilla so we thought, you know, just tossing in this little reference to what technically started it all would have been a nice idea. So, yeah, his head is large for a lot of different reasons. And we like the fact that he's got a large head, even though a lot of people love to bash our suit because of that. Uh, either the size of his head or just how skinny he is. Because, like I said, our, our costume is thin. And I wanted him thin because I wanted... Well, not only something that I could move around in really well, but it made sense, you know, because of the aforementioned the way a predator bleh, bleh, a predator is built. You know, they're very sleek and streamlined, and I wanted this thing to look like something that could actually hunt other animals, and as opposed to the fat, overweight, mountainous Godzilla that everyone is used to seeing. Uh, but yeah, uh, th there there was a lot of things that went into went into his build. Now, the the major problem with this costume, and it is actually a good thing that I'm talking about it right now with these photos. Uh, now, even though I wanted the head to be very large. Uh, there are a few elements to the head that I don't like because it is so large, and part of that is the shape of the jawline. And the jaw is big because, as you can see here, there is this balsa wood skull inside of the Hyper Godzilla head. And we had to build everything around this balsa wood frame. So he's got this very squared face. Um, now, the head itself, I will admit, is the design for the head is not exactly what I was going for uh, because I was wanting to base the head off of the the Godzilla 2000 maquette just because it's, it's like a hybrid of the 54 suit and the, the 64 and like a couple of other costumes and uh, that maquette itself is actually what made me go yes let's build a Godzilla costume um uh, but, again, because we were building around this honking, huge balsa wood frame, uh, all the details had to correlate to the shape of that skull. So it didn't really translate well for my idea for the head. But, in the end, I'm, I'm quite fine with the final result because, you know, the Hyper Godzilla is iconic. And, well, for people who have actually seen the costume. You know, people that have seen the movie Godzilla Battle Royale or uh, uh, G-Fantas Worlds Collide or just my random videos on YouTube or just stuff that people have taken at G-Fest. Uh, 
G Fest attendees in particular are very familiar with this costume because it got a lot of attention at G Fest. And <laughs> that's w one of the fun things about this costume is that I got to do a lot with this costume. I, you know, did the convention appearances. I actually appeared on a local television channel. Um, I, I did a guest appearance at a nursing home. You know, th I did a lot with this costume. Yeah, the nursing home incident was kind of fun. Uh, it's because I, I had this giant monster at a nursing home. And, you know, Dad was, like, talking to, like, the one of the people that actually paid for us to go over there and uh, show off the costume. And it's like, uh, we're not responsible for heart attacks or nightmares. So, <laughs> um the, 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 I, I have done quite a lot with this costume in the, I think, three years it actually existed. Yeah, this costume no longer exists, unfortunately. Um, you know, we have very limited space, and I I think it was, I can't remember when, but I needed a, a giant monster, uh, uh, Karuda, from G Fantas Death Game. And I needed a frame quickly because we had a year, no, two years, to build uh, see, Gifantis, Giga, Karuda, Garagra, and then a bunch of other puppets. And these costumes take a long time to build. So the easiest thing for us to do was to basically scrap Hyper Godzilla, take him apart and repurpose all of his elements. So Hyper Godzilla's frame uh, became the build for Karuda, and then all of his skin texture wound up being used for Garagara. Uh, so I did manage to find a way to repurpose the suit, but alas, Hyper Godzilla himself is no longer in this world. Um, let's see, I'm trying to figure out where to go from here, because I remembered something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a detail that uh, actually there's several details about this costume that nobody notices um th th his head is actually not built right because the eyes are not lined up it's like his left eye is like a inch or two actually behind his right eye uh, but the way that we built the head no one ever really noticed that and I even really didn't notice it either until, like, until I was compiling these photos the first time around. And then I noticed in the photos that it was like, oh, that just looks kind of odd. And then I went out and looked at the skull, and it's like, oh, we kind of messed that <laughs> up. Um, another thing is uh, his neck, if you notice all those grooves. Um... I'm I botched up the number. It's like one side of his neck has like 24, 25 of these little ridges, and the other side only has like 19. Uh, you know, it's just a minor detail that no one noticed ever. You know, because I've never had anyone tell me that they noticed that uh, flaw in the design. But I am anal, I guess would be the term. Uh, I, I want things to be very symmetrical whenever I design something. Uh, ironic, considering that my designs themselves have a lot of asymmetrical elements to them. But, you know, I want to make sure that everything lines up and is perfect and, uh, you know, matches from one side to the other. And they never do. So whenever something like the, the neck ridges happens it really bugs me even though it's something that nobody ever notices um, oh but th th this is a good time to actually talk about some stuff that people have been curious about in terms of like how I build the costumes and uh, just what we use if you notice early in the video uh, like the first picture shown was actually just a uh, pictures of all the 
the materials that we use to build these costumes. Uh, you know, the, the costumes themselves are built out of urethane foam uh, of varying thicknesses. And what we do is we'll design this headliner bodysuit. The headliner material is uh, that the stuff that is over your head in a car, you know. Uh, it, it's just that material. Uh, and my dad owns an upholstery shop, so he can get that stuff fairly easily. Uh, but uh, we'll make this form-fitting bodysuit, and then on top of that, we will just build it up with the foam rubber, as you could tell from the, the videos here. And, or the pictures, videos, I didn't, eh, whatever. Uh, the pictures are, <laughs> you know, showing you right here. Uh, you know, and then we'll, like, make the little texture strips out of a very thin foam and then apply those in varying sizes. Um, and then, like, on top of the, the foam rubber and the, the detailed textures and everything, then we will apply latex rubber. And that's what gives the costumes their skin. And it's also what makes them durable. Uh, oh, here, th on these photos, there's a uh, cushion wrap. I it's sort of like a synthetic cotton. It's really the best way I can describe it. Uh, that stuff has come in handy a lot. Like, as you can see on the front of the neck, it's there for, yeah, to add in a little extra details of texture and also to cover up uh, spaces that didn't really have any texture. Cushion wrap has come in very well for us on many of our projects, if not all of them. Um, shaping the foam, uh, I really need to actually do, like, videos of this stuff to actually show you guys instead of just slideshows, but the, the texturing for the costumes are developed, uh, by, like, either just cutting them away with scissors or, uh, as with a later attempt at Godzilla that we tried to do, but, uh, I wound up scrapping for various reasons along with every costume that I had built. Uh, I might touch on that little incident in a future video, but not right now. But uh, we, uh, I rather, uh, I did the scaling, texturing, and everything with tweezers. And uh, tweezers actually worked out a lot better I in terms of like shaping the scales because uh, like right here, you can see like these darker spots. Yeah, like all across the neck there. That is actually uh, a powder that my dad had developed out of like grinding down blocks of foam rubber. And by actually using tweezers to shape these things, it uh, it negated the the the, ne the necessity before actually doing that extra step with the powder. Excuse me, I need a drink. <sighs> Much better. Um, yeah, and it also adds, like, another dimension to it. Oh, here is something that we did not try on any costume after this. Uh, the claws for the Hyper Godzilla were actually made out of resin. And... The resin claws were beneficial for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, they were solid, so you didn't have to worry about them bending or flexing or anything like that. But the resin claws were, well, they were made out of resin. They were very tough, and uh, if I was to, like, move just right and hit someone for whatever reason, uh, you know, they they did have the potential to actually hurt. It's like the teeth. The teeth were made out of resin, too. And I can't remember who it was, but at G-Fest, I was walking forward, and I miscalculated my distance, and I wound up headbutting the guy with the Godzilla costume. And the teeth grazed his forehead, and they didn't hurt him. You know, they, they didn't even really scratch him, but it, they did hit him enough to let him know that they were there. And... So, after this costume, all of the teeth and claws were just foam rubber. You know, there was not really a need to make them solid. 
And this was our first attempt at doing a a kaiju suit. So there was a lot of things that we learned by building this costume. We're like, okay, we're not going to do this again. Like the aforementioned plaster claws and the balsa wood head. We're never doing that again for anything. Um, oh, there was something else that we learned. Oh, yeah, the stance of the Hyper Godzilla. Uh, Hyper Godzilla was built to be crouched uh, so that he would be more akin to like the Godzilla 2000 suit and some of the later ones. Uh, so when the the body suit was constructed, I was crouched over. So the suit itself was built in this crouched over position, which was super uncomfortable and not fun to walk around in. I mean, for the first year or so, yeah, it was fine. But it was like after that, it was like, okay, this position for the suit is really not helpful for anyone. So uh, if you guys out there are watching this video to pick up tips on like how to build your costume, build your costume in an upright stance. Don't bend the legs like the Hyper Godzilla here. Actually make the legs straight up and down and just shape them to where they look like they're bent. Uh, your back will thank you. Trust me on that one. Um, you know, you want to be very comfortable in your costume. And just being crouched over all the time, not fun. Uh, oh, but here is something I could have commentated on earlier. Uh, the eyelids. Uh, the fact that the eyes blink. Uh, this is one of the elements that I received a lot of uh, notoriety for with the costume. Just because... I don't know if anyone had ever made a costume, a, 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 co a convention costume, that actually had blinking eyes before. Uh, of Godzilla, but I remember that everyone loved the the way the fact that the eyes blinked so much that we actually integrated a similar setup in the the next costume we built the Veron. Uh, yeah, that's the end of that story. <laughs> I thought there'd be more to that, but no, sorry. Uh, Actually, right now at this point, I'm sort of running out of things to talk about. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys have a lot of a lot of questions, and I if you do, and I I don't cover anything in this, or there's like uh, extra details about the process of constructing a costume, you guys just want to know. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And I will do my best to res uh, to get back to you. Uh, sometimes it takes a while for me to respond because uh, I'm not a computer person. I don't really like computers, so I'm not on the computer that often. Uh, and I'm also building stuff like this, so you know my attention is elsewhere. But I will try my best to get back to you and respond. Uh, oh, but here is something that a lot of people don't notice about the costume. Uh, these plates are uh, obviously in these photos different colored than the rest of the costume uh, because the costume is charcoal gray but all of his armor plating is blue uh, if you look at the costume you know in these photos or any of the photos that I took with my camera or actually I, I think I've seen pictures other people have taken too um uh, you know, these are very obviously a different color scheme. But when you look at this costume on film, like in Godzilla Battle Royale, you can't note a difference in the colors. At least I haven't. Of course, I wear glasses anyway, but, you know, regardless of that. Uh, I notice that the lighting, uh, the different lightings you, you have a, a costume in picks up colors very differently. Uh, these armor plates being a good example. Uh... Another example I could give is the liquor costume. Uh, the first costume of the liquor that we had constructed, it was actually done in all these different shades of brown because uh, Dad wanted it to look like dried blood. But the costume itself in daylight, I mean, it was the most vibrant shades of red you could imagine. It was this very, very vibrant, very pretty costume. Which is an odd thing to say about a monster, is that it was pretty. <laughs> Especially something that has no skin or eyes. 
Uh, yeah, now everything I have to talk about pertains to a costume that's not Godzilla. <laughs> uh, but in the end, you know, uh, you know, like I said, Godzilla isn't exactly my favorite kaiju, but I am very pleased of everything that we had managed to accomplish with the costume. Uh, because if we did not build this costume, I wouldn't have been able to attain a dream that I've had for years. And my childhood dream was always to play Godzilla in a monster movie. And uh, thanks to Billy DeBose, I actually got that opportunity. And I got to use this costume in Godzilla Battle Royale. Uh, what you guys should check out, you know, if you want to see what this costume looks like in action. I'll leave a link below in the description. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, if you guys feel like watching uh, just show a style monster action silliness, you know, feel free to check out that movie. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> really at a loss of what to talk about now. So, uh, you know, if you guys want to check out my other videos, feel free. Uh, if not, uh, th it's your choice. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching this uh, slideshow retrospective on Hyper Godzilla. And I hope that it has been entertaining for you guys because it's actually been a lot of fun for me. Well, uh... Yeah, I'm out of stuff to talk about, so this is Jacob K. Baker for Atomic Stick Figure Productions, and I bid you guys uh, good night, and may God bless. <laughs>